Coming up on today's show, we will head to San Francisco and check in on the arch-rival San Francisco 49ers as their star receiver, Brandon Ayuk, has requested a trade. We'll tell you what that means for the Niners and the rest of the division and how that could affect the Seattle Seahawks coming up in just a matter of moments. Also, Anthony Bradford, already named a bust by Bleacher Report. A little harsh. We'll examine that, react to it coming up in just a matter of moments. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us here on today's program. Folks, I need your help. I'm closing in on 8,000 followers on X, formerly known as Twitter. At Tyler Jones Live is where you can find me. I had a blue check mark at one point in time, but I am not willing to pay it. Elon's a rich guy. He doesn't need 10 more dollars of my money. I promise it's me, folks. Give me a follow. The first 10 people... That follow me on X, you are getting a follow back. So, it's a race. Let's see who the first 10 are going to be. Follow me on X at Tyler Jones Live, and we'll get started with today's show. Brandon Ayuk has requested a trade from the San Francisco 49ers as he is seeking a new contract. Let's set the scene for you here before we get to the breaking news tweet from Mike Garofolo of the NFL Network in a moment. Ayuk has been in negotiations for months about getting a new contract. You may recall John Lynch, prior to the draft, said that they fully anticipate that Brandon Ayuk will be a part of their long-term plans in San Francisco for many years to come. But fast forward to now, and there's no deal in place, and now he's looking to potentially take his talents elsewhere where he can get the money that he is seeking. And this news comes on the same day that the San Francisco 49ers announced that they were placing Ricky Purcell, their first-round pick wide receiver out of Florida, on the non-football injury list. So trouble in paradise in San Francisco. Garofolo tweeting this out this morning, saying, Source 49ers All-Pro wide receiver Brendan Ayuk has officially requested a trade after an off-season of unsuccessful attempts to reach an extension. Despite a recent meeting, the Niners haven't been willing to engage in negotiations since May, so IUK has respectfully asked out. All right, so what does this mean for Seattle? First and foremost, a trade for Brandon IUK is highly unlikely. That ain't happening. The Seahawks have a great receiving core, and... Intradivision trades are rare to begin with. So let's take that out of the equation for a second. Now, what I think at big picture for the Seattle Seahawks of what this could really mean, if Ayuk's gone, Brock Purdy's going to get paid here pretty soon, they're going to have to start making some hard decisions there in San Francisco. And personally, I don't think building a team around Brock Purdy is a long-term plan for success for that organization. This could be the first brick to fall out of the foundation in San Francisco. The reign of terror for this San Francisco 49ers team could finally be coming to an end. This might be the beginning of the end for the San Francisco 49ers, in the perfect opportunity for the Seattle Seahawks to capitalize with their young core moving up from here. To me, that's my big takeaway from all this, is that this could be the start of the foundation falling apart in San Francisco. That is huge, folks. Brandon Ayuk, former first-round pick out of Arizona State in 2020, coming off a career season in 2023, where he was the second-team All-Pro led the 49ers in catches, yards, and touchdown catches. He was, without a doubt, their best receiver this past season. He passed up Debo Samuel as the go-to guy in this uh, San Francisco 49ers offense. You look at the statistics, over 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns, nearly 18 yards of reception. Brandon Ayuk was that dude this year. And something to keep an eye on as well in this Brendan Ayuk situation, whether he ends up in San Francisco or gets traded elsewhere, is the money that he ultimately gets paid. Because the Seahawks, they have money that they'll have to give. DK Metcalf here pretty soon. He will be 
extended sooner than later. And with the domino effect of all these receivers getting paid, this will have an effect on DK Metcalf in his extension whenever that happens as well. Because if you look at the numbers, all right, DK is already the 10th highest paid receiver in the National Football League. And the Seahawks have every intention of keeping DK Metcalf around, and rightfully so. Ayuk is looking for money somewhere between the range of what St. Brown just got paid from the Lions at $30 million, and Justin Jefferson, what he just got paid of the $35 million he got for the Minnesota Vikings. So let's say that he gets 32, 33 in that range. What does that mean for DK Metcalf? Is DK going to demand that type of money as well? I would think so. So with that said, what do you guys think? Are the Niners going to end up trading Brandon Ayuk? I sure hope so, and I hope they get fleeced. Wouldn't that be just beautiful, folks? What do you think? What's going to happen in San Fran? Will the Niners trade Brandon Ayuk? Type T for trade, K for keep. Let us know in the comments section below. Seahawks Today brings you daily Seattle Seahawks coverage you won't find anywhere else with our news and rumors, live shows twice a week. We're going to be with you on Wednesday and Thursday this week. We're doing our Madden Sims for every Seahawks game this season. We're bringing you breaking news. Anytime something happens involving your Seahawks, whether it be a trade or a free agent signing, if they somehow traded for Brandon Ayuk, for crying out loud, which I still think is highly unlikely. We'll go live on the channel. I guarantee that much. Subscribe now for free. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV for daily Seahawks coverage you won't find anywhere else. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV to subscribe now for free. Let's shift gears now back to Seattle where we find Anthony Bradford, the Seahawks' second-year offensive guard out of LSU, has been named the biggest bust of 2024 by Bleacher Report. Now, usually when you hear the term biggest bust in everyday life, that means something else. Not what we're talking about in this case. This is the bad meaning uh, from Bleacher Report. Let's let them weigh in and see what they had to say as they were disrespecting our guy, Anthony Bradford, here. Outside of left tackle Charles Cross, there's not much excitement for Seattle's offensive line. The unit, quite frankly, could be atrocious. I'll point to Anthony Bradford because of his pass protection woes as a rookie, but he's simply one piece of a greater problem. Now, folks, I'll say this. This is a little disrespectful, but I'll point to this as well. The jury's still out on Anthony Bradford. He still has a lot to prove after a small sample size last year. But the silver lining for the Seattle Seahawks, if Bleacher Report is right, and they very well could be, that Anthony Bradford is not that guy, they do have other options. You drafted Christian Haynes for a reason. You have a very competitive battle for that right guard spot. We talked about McClendon Curtis a while back having a very good offseason and being a part of the competition as well. So even if Anthony Bradford isn't it, and that could be the case, I think Seattle, one way or another, is going to be okay. We'll compare the two players here in just a moment, but let's ask you, do you believe in Anthony Bradford? Type B for believe, type D for don't. Weigh in the comments section, let us know what you think. Byron Murphy jerseys are on sale now, chatsports.com slash Murphy. He'll wear the number 91, so just add a 9 to that one. Got the home jersey, the road white jersey, got the alternate throwback uniform as well, men's and women's options, all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Free shipping on top of that as well. Go see for yourself as well as our other Seahawks gear at chatsports.com slash Murphy's, where you can find this today. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. That's chatsports.com slash Murphy. More on Anthony Bradford. The 2023 fourth-round pick out of LSU played in 14 games last season with a total of 10 starts. And the most impressive thing that he did was he allowed just one sack as a rookie. But that doesn't tell the full story when it comes to what Anthony Bradford did. As you look at the further statistics from Pro Football Focus, and they weren't so pretty. The overall grade was a 51.7 off of 659 s snaps. Allowed five hits. This is the, 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 the biggie here, folks. 22 hurries allowed 
And uh, four penalties also called on Anthony Bradford last year as well. When it comes to the right guard competition, I have people ask me, Tyler, who do you want to win the job? Who's going to win the job? First off, I don't care who wins the job. I just want somebody to play well. Is that too much to ask? If it's Anthony Bradford, if it's Christian Ains, if it's McClendon Curtis, I don't care. I want the best man to win the job and to play at a high level. That's what I care about. And when I look at Christian Haynes, this is somebody that I think about this new administration here in Seattle. Mike McDonald and uh, Scott Huff, the offensive line coach, and Ryan Grubb. This is who they pointed to, okay? This is who they have their eyes on is Christian Haynes, the two-time third-team All-American out of UConn, the younger brother of NFL defensive end Marcus Haynes, who some people had a first-round grade on and slipped all the way to the third round. Remember, we heard that the Seahawks were looking at potentially trading up to land Christian Haynes. They weren't expecting him to be available when they picked there in the third round. And if you look at his numbers a little further last year, granted these are college grades, so it's not a direct comparison to Anthony Bradford, he passed the smell test. Overall grade of 80.2, only allowed one sack, one hit, just 10 hurries and four penalties. If I were to guess, my money is on Christian Haynes to ultimately win this job because of the fact that he is their guy. He is Mike McDonald, Scott Huff, and Ryan Grubb's guy. Anthony Bradford is not their guy. They don't have that allegiance necessarily like Pete Carroll did in that front. Granted, John Schneider was involved in the selection of both those guys, But nonetheless, I think the edge slightly goes to Christian Haynes, but we shall see. Pick a right guard. Who's going to win the job? You think it's Anthony Bradford or you think it's Christian Haynes? Type AB for Anthony Bradford. Type CH for Christian Haynes. Let us know in the comments section below. Follow me on X at Tyler Jones Live for continuing Seahawks coverage. And I will see you next time right here on Seahawks Today. 